back, three amigos, crushing it, coming to the end of the year. You know, it's like the it's like the end of the movie. You know, they're like, where have they been? And all of a sudden we're just like dun, 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 on a horse, like, hey, we're here, we're here, you know. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant like where they do the the they, they like freeze frame and they say what they happened in their life, and they're like, he worked at a gas station <sighs> and died in his forties. I thought it was that. My <laughs> oh bad. my god. Yeah, where it's like the triumphant return. <laughs> yeah. Okay, exactly, cool. You know? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm here. I'm Mike. <laughs> I'm I'm Nick, sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Steph. Hey, how's it going, guys? <laughs> hey. hey, there you go. Yeah, you know. We're out here, but we're back. The three amigos are back to to round out this year, to bring it all to a close, put a nice little bow on it by talking about our favorite games from 2020. Yeah. This most uneventful of years. Yes, nothing's happened. Yeah. <laughs> nothing's happened. Well, yeah. But there have been a- some board games. It's been a wild year. We hope everyone's safe and healthy and stuff yes. like that. It's been it's been a weird one, but there have been a lot of great games that have come out this year. It's just been it, it's been a weird year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, it's been just, non-standard for sure. Yeah, but we do have some games uh, that we enjoy, and in fact, uh, Board Game Geek has, has spent some. The users of Board Game Geek have spent some time ranking some games, and there are some games from 2020. That have already made a splash on the overall rankings of yeah. all time, yeah. in fact. Yeah. One is so, very high, yes. Yeah, one's quite high up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our favorite games from 2020 that we've played. We obviously haven't played everything, yeah, although Steph, course. I think, uh, has probably, probably played, has played more than us. Steph is yeah. our, our, our <laughs> the person in the know in these situations, and we're just a couple of hangers on. Yeah, we just, we're just riding Steph's coattails. Yeah, oh, sure. all the way. Now, all now the way. Just, just to put uh, it into perspective, I've played about 200 games from 2020. I did the math. See, From 2020, 200 I, games came out in 2020. Oh, no. way more well, than that. I, I am still behind. Like, I have some catching up to do. I'm still behind. But, you know, I right now at this time, how I've played those, 200 games. <laughs> how many of those did you play in one week? Well, in one week? No, no. <laughs> Maybe 50. Okay, cool. Okay, so we, we, we played more games in one week than Steph has of, in 2020. Some of them were from 2020. <laughs> Not many. Some of them were 2020. Wow, 200 games this year. Mike, Steph, you're a, a superhero. I've, I've played, I've played a decent amount, I feel like, but not oh quite God. that many. I've That's done a decent amazing. amount of 2020 oh, yeah. games. No, yeah. yeah. We played like four. <laughs> yeah. No, see, well, see, whatever, I, whatever I, we I have played. 500, but only two of them, 200 of those were 2020 games. So it's a little weird, right? <laughs> There you go. Weird. 500 new games to you, Steph? Yeah. That's intense. I know. Oh I'm, I'm a little crazy. Ow. It's fine. I've been called crazy. Oh, I no. love it, though. It's, it's, it's so intense. Hobby. I love it's brilliant. it. Yes, it's great. Passion. <laughs> it's great. I love that. So we are going to talk about our favorite games from 2020. And then what we're going to do is we're going to compare them to the overall rankings of 2020 games on Board Game Geek as they currently stand today in their rankings on Board Game Geek the 10 best games from 2020. We're basically gonna see, do our tastes line up with the people? Are they wildly different than the people of Board Game Geek? Uh, I guess we'll have to find find out. out. So let's go ahead and start on the Board Game Geek side of life, what you all there have ranked together in those, those, the way that it all goes into an algorithm and poops out a number. I don't know how that works. Well, I, I don't either. It's the internet, man. It's weird. That's but what Aldi does that kind of stuff. Aldi He's does smart. all that yeah, stuff. Know, that's, all, that's the Aldi show right there. But we're going to go with <laughs> Board Game Geek's number 10 highest ranked game from 2020 right now. All right. So one thing I will say, all the top 10s from this year are in the top 1,000. So it's been a good year. They're already yeah, in the top 1,000 overall. Is 820 overall, and that is King of Tokyo Dark Edition. So this is that the new, new, that new, new King of Tokyo. The old become new again. Yeah, King this this game is, it's it's mostly King of Tokyo. Yeah. And to be fair, it is about 85% the same as King of Tokyo. So if you like King of Tokyo, you'll probably like this. But now there's like new abilities, and you essentially are getting like wicked, wickedness points and as you get wickedness points, you essentially unlock different abilities and stuff like kind that. Kind of beefed up and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's a pretty simple addition to a very simple game, ultimately. But it doesn't, like, over-convolute it. And it's actually, I think it's a really cool, like, to me, I'm like, if you're going to get a King of Tokyo, get personally, I would be like, just get this one. Because it has more to it. And I think it's a slightly better game than the original. But to be fair, I don't like the original. So, <laughs> so I'm there pretty you biased. Go. Yes. I also like the aesthetic, too. I like the kind of black yes. and white noir yeah, did you play this one, Steph? This no, I mean, that, this has uh, escaped me right now. So, I mean, obviously I want to. It will happen one day. 
King of Tokyo yeah. so what you're is pretty is... good. I would, I mean, I don't know how it differs. Like you said, it's probably very similar. So I'm not like, oh, it's I need to play similar. that right now. Yeah. 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 I'd say it's probably like halfway between normal King of Tokyo and King of Tokyo with like some of the power up stuff. Because okay. it yeah. kind of like has some things, but it's not, you know. Yeah, kind of. It's, I mean, it's definitely cool, but it is, again, like. 80 90 percent the same game one <laughs> yeah. thing i do like though is like mike said i do really like the aesthetic i've always been a big fan of like black and white with like a splash of color yeah, like sin city ish yeah it, and you know? it's like it definitely has that look i think it looks really cool um yeah and it's a it's a a good second special edition whatever it's specific, dark edition i guess is what it's specifically yeah. called but yeah it's it's good yeah yep yeah, so that's why it's number 10 from board game geek 820 ranked overall already in the top thousand yeah so let's go ahead and jump into our number 10 Our number 10 comes in at 5,655. It's called Gods Love Dinosaurs. Now, guys, they I've do. played this one, and I know you guys really love this one. I love tile placement anyway, and there are really cute little meeples yes. in there. So t tell me about the game, guys. There are. They're very small little meeples. They're tiny little, itty -bitty little eagles and tigers <laughs> and things. And so this is a game, like Steph said, it's a tile laying kind of... Um, puzzly game where you're going to be taking yeah. these sort of hexagonal domino pieces. There's two little hexes yeah. that are bound together and you're going to be adding it somewhere into your kind of ever growing ecosystem. Uh, and in this game, you're basically trying to create a balanced food chain because you have prey animals like rabbits, frogs, and uh, uh, rats, rats yep. who basically they can go on to certain land types. And if they are adjacent to a land type they like, when they activate, they will multiply. But they have to be in, you know, the rats kind of want to be in swampy lands and things like that. So they have to be in the right kind of areas. Yep. Then you have predators, uh, eagles, and tigers, which are going to move around and hopefully eat prey. And if they eat enough prey, they will multiply. But they have to make sure they eat prey so they don't starve and go away. Then ultimately you have dinosaurs, which can eat anything, but if they eat predator animals, you lay eggs, which are ultimately your points. So you have to kind of because create eight. Because science. Because science, that's why it's how it worked. <laughs> uh, eggs were the currency. But you have to create this balance because yeah. you need to have prey animals for the predators to eat. And you have to move things around when they activate. Uh, in such a way that you keep everything kind of close to each other. You don't decimate one of your populations to try to keep this balance going. And so that's what I actually really liked about it. I didn't know when we started playing it kind of um, how tricky that balancing yeah, act might it can be. be. for sure. I did very poorly the first time. I was yeah. like, oh, I just, I don't have any prey animals now. Uh, that's bad. That's yeah. not good. My tiger's going to starve. If something can't eat, if a predator, either a dinosaur or a tiger or an eagle can't eat, they die. Yeah. So it's like one of those things you have to, and then they all move in different ways. Like eagles can move three three spaces in a straight line because they're right. just flying, and they'll eat everything in their path um, that's a prey animal. But then tigers can move only two spaces, but they can turn. And so it's like you have to set stuff up in a way so that they can eat as much as possible, to multiply as much as possible. And then when the dinosaurs activate, the dinosaurs can only move five spaces but they have to end up on a mountain space so you yeah, have to make so they sure have like little rules yeah you have to make sure that you have enough stuff that the dinosaur can eat to gain points but then be able to get back to a mountain space in those places and it's a it's a really fun little puzzle that's got a really great aesthetic too that i really mm -hmm. like and again very cute little meeples it's little meeples are adorable yeah it's a lo little puzzle but not like crazy mind melty puzzle yeah it's a it's a great kind of relaxing little game yeah, so that's why we liked it. That's why it's our uh, number yeah. 10 for the year. It's a Excellent. cool little game, especially if you like tile laying type games. Um, yes. This is going to, I think, be a, a fun one. Yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number nine. So number nine is number eight fourteen overall, and I know Steph loves this game. This is Tang I Garden. Play this I want to so play it. So we have not played. I want to play this so badly. Yes. Tang Garden looks amazing. Steph, tell us a little bit about it. I know it's a BGG oh, pick, man. but why it's, do we like Tang Garden? It's so gorgeous. First of all, it's like one of the most beautiful. I love, love, love that. And like you're making this like scenery and this like panorama. So it, uh, the whole end result of this game is just like epically gorgeous but the gameplay is actually very smooth and elegant as well because you're you're either placing tiles down almost like in a carcassonne manner where you're matching up the sides and you're trying to like create these like enclosures of different terrain types um, but also you could choose to put out decorations which are the trees you know the pavilions grab a new person you're trying to like manage your tracks to get more people so you can get more scoring opportunities so there's a lot of little different elements going on but it's not very complicated because you're either putting tiles down or you're putting out decorations so it's a mixture of these two elements that are coming together to make this like gorgeous game it's it's really it's really clever you yeah. guys would really like it i already know it, it. Is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's 
pretty. Yeah, yeah I really yeah. want to try it. I've almost like busted it out. I think it's on Tabletopia or is, something. Yeah. And oh, it and is. I'm like, yeah. ah, but it's. It seems like it's meant to be a tactile experience. Yeah, That's what's held me back table. from trying that so far. Um, but. Yeah, Tank Garden seems. Yeah, I, mean, I have to admit, I liked it better playing. I liked it better playing on um, in, in person than I did on TTS. But yeah, um, that's okay yeah, because sure. it's still there, and you can still try it out on TTS. So yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. You can figure out like like you said, you figure out that get figure out the gameplay element of it. Then you can. Well, you that's get what the so much of like digital gaming go. is for me. It's like it's basically just a, a way to be like, do I want to buy this game in physical? Because I like physical gaming much much more than digital gaming, sure. as I think most people do. But it's a great way to be like, I want to see if I like this game enough to actually buy it. And that's, I think, a great boon to the amount of digital board games. That has, One thing about this year that's been great is like there's been a huge support of digital board games because we have to play remotely. And so it's been really, really great to be like, oh, yeah, this is really cool. I'll buy this game. Like To me, it, it, it just makes me want to buy games more in the physical way. Because yeah. I'm like, oh, I like this this much here. That means I'm really going to like it if I can like touch it. And in the world. Stuff, you know? Yeah. 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 So that's uh, our number nine, no, was it? Number or BG, I'm sorry. BGG's number nine, ranked uh, 814 overall. So let's go ahead and jump into our number nine. Our number nine coming in at 2672 overall is Tawanta Suyu. Now this is another big T game. It's in like the T game series yeah. from Board and Dice. Um, this is epically big and so there's lots of symbols lots of good choices every turn i mean there's so much to do and obviously you can't do it all which makes a great game right a great euro for me um and so you got to pick your paths as best you can and and play off of what other people are doing you know every turn you're gonna like place a meeple down and gather actions depending on possibly you can get more actions if you put it next to a, a similar colored meeple that kind of thing but every space offers a wide variety of choices. So one space gives three options, another space gives maybe three other options. And so you're trying to like, using the cards in your hand with the symbols on those cards to try and place appropriately to get the actions you want. And it does a whole lot of like, it's a little bit of abstract thinking and planning, but you know, it's, a, it's all about optimizing the different actions that you're taking. Um, have you guys played this one? Uh, I've played it. Mm-hmm. Nick has not yet. Not and yet. I agree. <laughs> it was, was uh, I enjoyed it, but I got done and I'm like, I need to sit down for a minute. <laughs> uh, that was a lot. It was, Because like you said, like there's like 80 some odd worker placement spaces and you place a meeple down, which will give you three options around it. I think two of which you can activate, but you have to play a card to go to the matching space. There's a lot to My track. Head really hurts. And it's, it's really good, but I was just like, I am going to do, I'm going to get a soldier or whatever. And it was really interesting, but beefy. So yeah. I need to play it again to like really settle in my brain, like what's going on. Yeah. But I liked it a lot. I really want to play. I, I like board and dice games. I like all those T games. So really want to try it. I haven't had a chance to yet. Yeah. yeah. But really, really want to try it. <laughs> Hope you get a chance to play it again soon. But it's a really cool game, especially if you like those games, those uh, Teotihuacan, Tekenus, those kind of big uh, games that Board and Dice has been doing. You'll probably enjoy this as well. Um, it, it's, uh, yeah, it's cool, but it's on the heavier side, uh, definitely. Probably out of all those I just mentioned, probably the, to me, the the heaviest. But again, that's after one play. So, yeah. um, Twad Tzu, though, it's a great, great pick by us. Well done, well us. Well done, well done. Uh, that is our number, number, number nine, nine, I believe it is. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number eight. All right, BG, your number eight is number 715 overall, and that is Forgotten Waters. This yeah. is the Plaid Hat game in the next, like, in the Crossroads system that, like, Dead of Winter yeah. is in. Right. We just got this game. Have not had a chance to play oh. it, though, but really, really want to play it. It's yeah, have you played it, Steph? Super you know epic. About it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've only, so there, there, there's kind of, like, scenario-based, and we kind of played the first half of the first scenario because it's pretty it's an epic adventure right right? it's gonna take you it probably took us three hours to get through half of the first adventure so i mean you're you're, you're spending some time but you know you're kind of working with other pirates to do the different tasks but you're also not because there's like different like objectives that you're doing you're trying to level up and get your own stats but ultimately you are trying to work as a team to 
successfully fulfill your mission. You're you're working through so it's it's again it's a plaid hat adventure book kind of game where you're flipping the pages. You're gonna you know work out what's going on on the page. You might have an encounter with another pirate ship. You might find an island. You might have to do this, this, this. And so it's like, you don't really know what's going to happen. It's an exploration game. And uh, it's a, it's a story driven game using an app as well. So if it, it all works really well. I mean, we played two player, which is a little bit different than playing with a whole bunch of people. So I don't know, like, you know, because COVID and right. everything. But but yeah. I know people were playing it via Zoom and everything because everybody can have their own app yeah. and their own stats. So you can do it. I just haven't had the chance to, to try that out yet. But I very yeah, much that's how we're to planning it. on playing it. Yeah, you guys will love it. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to do the same thing. Yeah, it seems really cool. I love like the colorful look of it oh, and stuff. So oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. And I like that idea where this one isn't like dead of winter seemingly where there's like a traitor, but it's like everyone, you have to work together to yeah. survive or everybody loses. Yes. <laughs> so I really enjoy that, that you have to, you have to be a team player, but you're kind of hoping to be just like the most epic pirate yeah. of, the, of them all. <laughs> so to me, it's like, this is sort of effectively a co-op game, but you know, you kind have like of, a yeah. little bragging rights and be like, I was the greatest. Pirate. Yes, basically yeah. that. That's <laughs> fun to me. Yeah, yeah, that's great. You know, yeah. um, so Forgotten Waters is one that we really want to try. I know it's made a splash. Uh, so oh. say it as you uh, <laughs> <laughs> So that's board game geeks number eight, everybody. Let's go ahead and jump Excellent. into our number eight with fewer puns. Yeah. Our number eight comes in fairly high, and we're probably gonna see it later on this list. It's at 632 overall called Oceans. Another splash, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Ah, oh, no, we, said, we said no puns. To the we ocean. said no puns. <laughs> we wouldn't do that to ourselves. <laughs> yeah, Oceans. Oceans is the next in the uh, the evolution games uh, from North Star Games. It's kind of, yeah, uh, adjacently related. Yeah, because you cannot. When people are asking you play Oceans with normal evolution, evolution climate, and you can't. They are they are it's its own deal. Different games. They they very much are. But we at this point. <clears throat> At least I can speak personally. I like it the most of all, like the evolution games. I really like that theme that you have a species, you're constantly evolving the species to adapt to like what's happening. I thought it was great with evolution. I thought evolution climate took it to the next level and yeah. it was even better. And then oceans I really, really like. But this basically is like you have a species, you're putting traits on those species like, you know, different ocean traits like inking. Like you have ink and octopus, you have ink. You're like a forager. You have all yeah. this, you're a filter feeder, all these different ways to like essentially eat as much food as possible and survive. But the cool thing about Oceans, which is nice, is it's very, very circular. Whereas everything is kind of just works in a big circle where you're you're adapting to the to the species to the left and to the right of you. And that could be your own species. If you have multiple species in a line, you could be like, okay, every time this species on my right here gets attacked by a predator, this species has like bottom feeder. So this species will actually get to feed because it's actually feeding off of this species. But then you can also have it to the left and that one will be like one of Mike's species over here. And so it's like this really cool like circular thing th that really works well and I really, really like it a lot. I think it's super fun. Um, and I think it's just, uh, it's it's the natural evolution, if you will, of this series. We're unstoppable. We're unstoppable with the puns. Can't oh stop. Unstoppable. Yeah, I, 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 have, I happen to agree gorgeous. with you, Nick, that I I think it's one of the best uh, out of the group, although I haven't played the climate yet. But um, I know that Ocean, I like Oceans more than Evolution. So um, I think it's yeah. beautiful also. It's just such, well, so well done with the production and everything. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it really is a gorgeous production, isn't it? And it kind of has a bit of the um, climate bit to it because when you have these kind of populations of fish that you can feed from, that might trigger abilities and events that happen. So that kind of feels a little bit, again, it feels like an evolution from evolution where mm -hmm. they take some bits from that and make their own thing. So yeah. Oceans is super pretty. I mean, it's got that great art style, that evolution um, kind of started with the watercolor art. Yeah, it's um, just... God. And it's cool. And then there's also like the deep cards. The stuff just gets weird. There's these bonkers cards and They're stuff. They're super lot. powerful. They're yeah. like all these crazy OP cards yeah. that everyone, there's like 80 of them. They're all unique and they're just, they're so intense and powerful. You yeah. start playing with so those and it element. gets super weird. It's just, it's really, really fun. I like it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Highly recommend it. So that's our number eight, eight is it? Yeah. Uh, Oceans, do check it out. Again, you might see it soon on the BGG list. We won't tell, but let's get into Board Game Geeks number seven.
All right, BGG, your number seven is 673 overall, and that is Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Great the, game! The third in the West Kingdom line. It's a great game. Um, which kingdom's next? Is it north or south? No, south or east? Yeah, we've done north. We've done north, that's right, yeah. <laughs> this is Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Um, Mike really likes this game. <laughs> Uh, it's a great game, as I'll say. Yeah, the West Vi Kingdom trilogy has been amazing all throughout. Viscounts is no exception. I yeah. like it a lot. That's not a not a surprise. Yeah. If you watched our hot top hundred games of all time recently on our own channel, uh, it was up there. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, it was the highest ranked of all the West Kingdom trilogy games. But Paladins in it are like. Yeah, right I do like Paladins time. a lot. I, I haven't played Viscounts yet, but I, <sighs> considering how much he likes it, and like we have very very similar tastes in games, I'm sure that I will. Uh, enjoy it quite a bit. Steph, what do you, you think about it, Steph? Oh, yeah. I, I played it um, on TTS, but now I have a copy. I haven't played my copy yet, but I can't wait to, to actually like put it out on the table, take beautiful pictures of it. Um, it. It is gorgeous. I happen to think I like Paladins a little bit better. However, uh, they're, they're all totally different, right? Architects, Paladins, Viscount. Yes, it's just they're like they're all different. totally different. They all offer their own unique percep perceptive things or whatever, you know. And it's just like totally different. And you're mm -hmm. going to have a good experience no matter what, what game you choose. Um, and I'm excited to dive deeper into the Viscount series just because... You know, there's a lot to figure out. I mean, again, it's another Euro with lots of choices. You got to do so much and uh, you can't do it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you really do kind of like Paladins does that. Uh, in Viscounts, you have to specialize to a degree or yeah. you just have a game plan. Because if you try to do a little bit of everything, you don't get very far down any one path, as it were. And uh, it probably won't work out as great. Um, yeah, Viscounts and Paladins are so close. And that's not to say Architects is way below it, but they are, those two are just so exceptional. Um, yeah. So that's Board Game Geeks number seven was a 673 overall. You yeah, might see it pop up again later. So we'll just move on to our number seven. Our number seven comes in at 2590 and it's called Paleo. Now, I'm a big, huge exploration survival type fan. Uh, like, I love Seventh Continent, and I recently learned um, The Lost Expedition. I've, I've been, like, playing all these survival games that I'm really enjoying it. So th this one was very highly ranked, you know, in, in my world. And I don't know if these guys have played it, but it's a cooperative experience where you are just, you know, trying to survive. You're trying to create this, like, painting on the wall, the art, the caveman artwork, um, and if you can get all five pieces before you basically starve to death, <laughs> then you're then you're good. And you're <laughs> and so you're flipping over these cards and you're trying to fulfill these different missions between everybody. You might lend a helping hand to your to your other like cooperative partner over there doing his own thing, and he might need you know your weapons or something. So you're you're kind of working together to kill the mammoth and get the food that you need to survive their night and stuff like that. But all while trying to find the pieces you also need in order to win the game. Have you guys tried That's it? That's super cool. Yeah, we haven't played... No, no we haven't yet. tried it yet. And it's, it sounds like something that would be interesting. Mm -hmm. I have kind of heard about it recently. It kind of has popped up places and things. Um, I think in general, we do like those kind of cooperative, hard survival yeah. type games. Yeah, we like Robinson Crusoe and, and Seven yeah. Continents and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, so I, yeah. I think it would be something that we would enjoy. Yes. And I like the idea of like sort of just trying to get your history down before you disappear. Yeah, it's kind that's of an interesting, super cool. uh, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what really happened, right? So um, yeah. that sounds really fascinating. Another really cool thing about Paleo is that there are different, like, I, I want to say levels. It's ki It's kind of a campaign game where you're mixing like, stack A oh. and stack B together for your first game and you're mixing stack B and stack C together mm. for your second game. And so there's like, I think 13 different stacks or something, 10 different stacks. And so you can mix and match Whoa. these different stacks once you're done with the campaign and just kind of experience different things each time you play. And I think that's like really interesting. And then, you know, it keeps, keeps you wanting more. It keeps you, what's next? What's next? How is it going to play out this time? Um, and so I think there's a lot, a lot of replay value here. Um, so it's, you know, it's definitely one I'm going to like play through and see what happens. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That was going to be my one question was kind of like, how does it kind of keep, uh, change and stuff, yeah. changing? Yeah. And that's a really cool way to do it. Especially once you go through and you can start, start mixing and matching weird combinations. Oh, yeah. That's really interesting. Uh, so that's paleo. Yeah, y'all. Yeah. That's our number seven. 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 <laughs> All right. Uh, let's jump into board game geeks. Number six.
Number six was just mentioned Board Game Geek, and it is 631 overall, and that is Ocean. It's making a splash, y'all. <laughs> the puns are back. It's, I haven't come up with a new one. Yeah, you It's know, a salty game. It can be salty. It can, people talk about how this game is mean. I don't think it's that mean. It just feels, you know, like the natural way of life, you know? Everything's gotta eat. Everything's gotta eat, you know? I think the difference is with oceans versus, like, maybe an evolution. Evolution... Every like species, its default setting is an herbivore. Yeah. And you eat from the watering hole, and then you can add the trait to become a carnivore. And here, it's just, it's a different deal, man. Yeah. Stuff in the ocean, everything's a carnivore. That's pretty much. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. right? Like, it's just much more common. Yeah. So stuff's just kind of attacking and eating, just, taking from populations from another. Yeah. It's more about finding the balance yeah. between all of the populations so that you don't wipe one out to feed another, and you keep everything harmonious. So yeah. it's like meaner but in a way kind of to me more beautiful because yeah, it's about it, yeah. balance in life i don't know yeah yeah but we already talked about oceans we don't necessarily need to go through it again let's steph you got any burning desires to talk about oceans again it's colorful no it's awesome check it out <laughs> yeah Boom. yeah like nailed you said it. check it out that's nailed it. it all right that's all that matters y'all cool that's number so seven oceans we'll go ahead and get into our no we're gonna six. number six six <laughs> that was six we're going to six we're going to how about six, six. <laughs> Our number six is 4,164 overall, and it's a new roll and write called Rajas of the Ganges, the Dice Charmers. Oh, oh my God, so much fun. Oh. It's, so, it's good. so fun. It's so good. It's so fun. Like, oh. it was one that, it wasn't even that long ago, was it? It was like in the early fall, they announced that this was coming out around Essen. Yeah. Uh, you know, to be, you can pre order from their website, RR's website. Uh, and, uh, Huh. Like I was like, we love Roger the Ganges. I was like, oh man, I wonder if it's good. Let's just get it. And then it's so good. It's so, it's good. so fun. Hey, if you like, you Rajas, know what? Before we get into this, it, I, I just wanted to mention if you got, if anybody out there wants to play it, it is on yukata.de to play, and that's where I first saw it and first played it, and it's fantastic. Oh, okay, awesome. cool. That's awesome. Good to know yukata.de. Awesome. Yeah. It's super fun. It's basically. It's a lot like Raj's in, it in really a lot is. of ways. Yeah, yeah. I, I I really enjoy um, a lot of the the roll and rights that are based off bigger games, and some obviously implement and feel like the bigger game better than others. And Raj's is one of those that's really its own deal. Yes. While being very familiar. Yes. You're trying to cross the wealth and the fame tracks, but kind of some of the ways you go about it and stuff, and the dice, the way it works, is so. Fun to and me. And here's the thing: if our, our our thing with rolling rights is we Combos. like really really combo tastic rolling rights, and this is a game where you're just getting. I'm gonna put this over here. Ooh, Combos. this gives me this. Means I can put this over here. Ooh, I get this combo now. Ooh, I get this combo, and you can just go. Oh, it's so, so many combos. So <laughs> yeah, this is quickly Very rising satisfying. the ranks for me in terms of uh, rolling rights on my rolling right list. I like it a lot. But Steph, you go ahead and talk about it. We could we could literally just. Oh, just, I mean, oh I, God, I totally agree problem. with you guys. I think it's one of the better roll and rights that at least came out this year and overall in general. I mean, I love dice drafting, and that's what this is. Um, I love that there are two boards, so the front and the back, right? And so um, yeah, yeah, I think yes. it really replements uh, Raja of the Ganges very well um, in a lighter and yes. easier to play game uh, in a roll and write form. So I think it, it did, did yep. that very well, very, very well. Um, so I would definitely highly recommend it. Even if you're not a Raj with the Ganges fan, I think you might still enjoy this. So, um, you know, yeah, I, I personally I like it a little bit more than Raj with the Ganges. Uh, I, I'm usually not a huge fan wow, of okay, racing cool. to the finish, but in this game, it just, it, it's fun. Yeah. It's just a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. It, it's, uh, we like, we're a fan of both obviously, but, um, that race to the finish and especially when you start pulling off those big combos that you've kind of worked toward can be very satisfying. Yes. And so that's something that keeps me coming back. I'm like, ooh, I just want to pull off that one big move <laughs> yeah. and do like 18 things and then just crush you, you yeah. know, or whatever. Or Mike's get beat. really good at this game. <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> uh, so Raja the Ganges, the Dice Charmers. I agree with Steph. Like, if you like Raja, I think you're going to really like it. But even if you haven't tried Give Raja's shot, or yeah. maybe you don't love it, I think this game um, Stands on might be own. something for you because it is that kind of quicker. Yeah, yeah absolutely sure does. does. Absolutely yeah. does. Yeah, it's um, great. Yeah, like it a lot. That's why it's our number six, y'all. Uh, so let's jump into Board Game Geeks number five. BG year number five is 627 overall, and there are such cute kittens because this is Calico. Oh, yeah. Calico uh, quilt is making a, at its best. Quilt making at its best, man. It's really taken the, the hot, hot theme of quilting and just <laughs> taken to the next level, you know? <laughs> um, 
but no, Calico is a is a great. It's a very puzzly game where you're essentially oh, you're getting brutal. little patches, little hexagonal patches will have which will have colors and um, a pattern. patterns on them, and you're putting them in your little patchwork quilt. And essentially, um, if you put multiple colors next to each other, you will get buttons that represent that color. But if you put different, if you put the same pattern together, you can start attracting different kinds of cats. Different cats want different patterns, and they want a certain amount of that pattern before they'll come and like lie down in your quilt. And it's like this weird puzzle of because you're, because like they say like there's purple tiles, right? But those purple tiles will have. Like this tile will have this pattern on it, but this purple tile will have a different pattern. Every on it. color will have every pattern. Exactly. As well. I yeah. think a couple times, and so you're trying to like put the same colors next to each other, but also the same patterns next to each other, and it's a very difficult puzzle. And then you also have these like goals that you're going for in the middle of your patchwork quilt, which are also pushing you to put certain things certain, and it just destroys my brain. And Mike's fiance almost always takes our scores puts them together and then adds like 10 more and that's her score. She it's is so much better at this game. how poorly we do it. <laughs> but I her. really do like Calico. Uh, yeah. Steph, you play this one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm undefeated. Just so you know. I've played like five wow, really? to okay. times. I've played somewhere in that many range and I am undefeated. <laughs> oh, all right. So I, I enjoy I, I, that I'll game I'll have to that play so your hard. girlfriend in this game at some point just to see. The epic duel. I would battle. love it. It'd be a battle of titans. I know, really, though. And we could be on the bottom just, like, getting scraps. Just, getting, yeah, just, just making whatever a bad <laughs> quilt. <laughs> oh, hey, my gosh. Solo it is, is really, really fun, great. though. If you, if you guys play solo or if anybody yes. plays solo, it's very, very great. I love it. I, so, I really yeah, we made a, vid Mike made a video so about it on our good. show. good. Yes, it's so simple. And then with that kind of scenario book where you have sort of missions yeah. or objectives you're trying to complete, I think it's one of the most brilliantly simple solos ever, and it's 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 a great solo experience. Mm -hmm. Highly recommended. I played it a bunch. I played it as much solo as as multiplayer, and it's great. Yeah. Absolutely love the solo. Great great um, mentioning of that. So that is Calico. That is six twenty seven overall. Board Game Geeks number five. It's so brutal it's for so being hard. so sweet. What is with what is with quilting games being so difficult? <laughs> I don't know. So it's the underbelly of our society. If you're is a quilter, quilt, put it in the comments below. People. Is it always as brutal? Because it's it just it's hard. This patchwork, they're so hard. So hard. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and jump into hour number five. Our number five, I actually found out from you guys in an earlier 10v10. It, in, it is currently 1740 Ooh. overall, called Sorcerer City. Uh, Real-time tile placement yes. game. I love this game, guys. Thank you for the recommendation earlier it's, this year. And I, I went out you and got it, you know, try, had to try it. it. And you know what? Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are. Here it's we really go. Fun. Yeah. yeah, I always forget this is from 2020 somehow. Yeah. Like I feel like maybe we heard about it before. So I always think it's an older game than it is. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a great one. It's super fun. It's Speed Carcassonne. So Steph, you got to play it and you enjoyed it. So what kind of, uh, I guess, hit for you? So um, yeah, like you said, Speed Carcassonne, where every round your city is essentially destroyed and shuffled up in a deck of uh, tiles and you have to place them all out every round. I think that's like the best part and you're kind of building up your deck of tiles tiles but every round you get to buy some tiles from the from the marketplace and then there's goals to work towards you're trying to push up your different stats and you know there's just a lot of things to do with these tiles and i i really i think it's really clever and i i like the the added time mechanic where you you know you have to place your tiles in like two minutes or whatever yes. it is i think that's like so fun <laughs> Yeah. Well, we talk about the, the, the curve in this game is so fun and intense because the first round, you just start with your starting tiles. You have like you have 12 no, tiles or yeah, something. Yeah, and it's nothing. like you have two minutes. So you're just like casually being like, whatever, this is so easy. I have so much time. But by the fifth round, you have double the tiles, maybe more, depending Probably. on how, much, how many tiles you were able to acquire. Yeah. So it's like you get the same amount of time, but you have so many more tiles that every round it gets more and more intense as you're like trying to put these tiles out. Then you're getting monsters which screw up your whole situation. Like destroy stuff. And it's just so, so fun. Yeah. I, I really, really enjoy this game. Yeah. 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 It's really, it's just, it just adds a lot of fun, interesting stuff and makes that hecticness <laughs> while being a uh, fun like little spatial puzzle in yeah. front yeah, of you. Yeah, and then you reveal a, a monster cool and you're like, no! <laughs> It's like, you're like no, epic yeah, and you're like, oh gosh, like, like, oh god, where do I put this? Where do I put this? What well, stops your flow, right? Does, you're trying yeah. to get into the thing. I'm putting green over here. I'm putting monster. Like, oh, I got to think, yeah. and then time's winding down, and you got to bust something up, and 
Yeah, and there's a bunch of different monsters and stuff. So from game to game, like the challenges you have to overcome are going to be quite different. Obviously, the tiles you have available in the market are going to be quite different. Mm -hmm. um, and this game just gets big and fun. And you can play with, I don't know, five or six, six people. Six, yeah. yeah. I would not play um, with six. But. No, it's just it's a lot of stuff to track. But it's a really fun game. Yeah. Uh, Sorcerer City is just cool. I um, wanted to do a shout out uh, to, uh, to the, you know... Druid City, oh man, it's because they're the coins. Like, I don't know if you guys have the metal coins, but dang, we don't actually. Those metal coins they're are so seriously cool they like, put like, all other metal stack. coins in any other any Kickstarter ever. They put everything to shame. They are the best metal wow. coins ever. <laughs> Period. Wow, I agree. Okay. Yeah, I've seen them and stuff, and, and yeah. we don't we don't personally own them, but they are well, super cool. I highly recommend seeking them out because uh, and selling all of your other metal coins you have. Just because they are the best. I have <laughs> an extra set they that do I just stack keep on the table. Play. So it's just that they, because they all, they, they, the way that they're made is that you can stack them, that they stack in between each yeah. other, that they stack perfectly, and that it's just, they're kind of lock in place. And then they're, it's like, I don't even know how it happens, but they're just like magic. It's magic coin. It's so good. <laughs> Magic coins, hey. Get yourself some magic coins today <laughs> from Druid City Games, y'all. Magic coins. No, <laughs> they are incredibly satisfying. So Sponsored by Druid City Games. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. It's not. Just, uh, they, they, they live on my table know. just because they are that good. Oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, they are I super I haven't sweet. seen them. Those are awesome. Yeah. In terms of like a deluxe component, yeah, it's hard. I don't know what it's would Drew be City, better Drew than City that. making some deluxe stuff. I'll tell you. Yeah, that's an engineering feat, those coins. Giant games, deluxe stuff. That's what they do. Yeah. That's how they do it. Uh, so that's our number. What are we on, y'all? Five? five, yeah. Five? All right, sweet. Let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number four. Geeks number four is 622 overall, and that is another T game by Board and Dice, and this is Tikenu. Obelisk of the Sun. The obelisk of the Sun. Talking about a cool yeah. component. It's a big old obelisk in the middle of the board. Yeah. Which actually, like, you don't technically need, but like thematically, it, it actually makes helps sense. you rotate yeah. your little thing. Yeah, it's cool. So this game is, I, I've played this game a number of times now, and this game, for whatever reason, I just breaks my head. I don't know what it is about it, but this is a game where essentially a pool of dice, and the dice are either um, light, uh, white, brown, gray, or uh, black dice. Black and gold. And depending on where the shadow is from the obelisk, certain dice you can use or not. So if you're, if the sun is shining on this side of the obelisk and there's a white die here, then you can use that white die and you're fine. But on the other side where it's shadowed, the white die can't be used. And so the, the sun is constantly turning around this obelisk. And so certain dice are becoming available and you're like doing stuff. <laughs> I just, I, this game breaks dice my drafting. head. <laughs> dice, dice drafting, drafting all this stuff and all so many gods, things, man. and you just, and the game's not very. There's, you're only doing like 16, 16 turns, sixteen turns of the whole game, and it's Mike's much better than me. I just, I like this game a lot, but it breaks my head. I don't know what it is about it. I cannot wrap my head around this game. <laughs> it's, it's one of those games that, be, like, there's a lot of games where it's like you only have X amount of turns, yeah. but for whatever reason. To Kenu from the very beginning, I'm like, I only have 16 turns. And then you do something, you're like, I only have 15 turns. Like, it, <laughs> yeah. I feel the pressure yeah. so quickly. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know, Steph, I don't know if you get that same feeling. I enjoy it. Yes. But I, it is like, I've never felt, like you said, a lot of games where it's like, I have a lot to do and I don't have time to do any of it. Mm -hmm. This game, like, it might be the biggest example of that to me ever. Yeah. Oh, it's brutal. It's hard. It's good though, but it's tough. It's it's one of those big T games that is, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, it's really fun though. It's really cool. I think it looks beautiful in its you know uh, in its way, um, and you're kind of building up in different areas and stuff to kind of do these two scorings and stuff, and that's what it is. So it's really about trying to maximize and be as efficient as you can because you can get resources with these dice, but that's one of your 16 turns is just collecting bread. It's like, yeah. is that worthwhile to do? You know, you got to make sure if you're going to do that, that you really use those resources yeah. well. So there's just a I, lot of I really of, like it. I mean, I, I do like stuff. to want to see you better, yeah. but I I, I do enjoy Tekenu. And I think it will, they're, they're both really different heavy Euro games. Um, yes. And I, I think they'll both fill a different person's shelf. I mean, obviously many people own both of them just because they're both heavy Euro games. But, you know, some people really love dice and the, the randomness of dice will really be drawn to Tekenu better um, and utilizing those few actions to 
to, you know, get whatever you can to maybe get bonus actions. I mean, there's, there's so much you can do and a lot of different combos. So, Nick, I'm sure sure you'll get there because I know you love those combos. So there's, oh, there's yeah. opportunities here for that. It's just finding Oh, yeah, and them. I do so like the game. That's not an easy opportunity. It, for whatever now. reason, it, I, I, I need to play this game like multiple times in a month just to finally solidify it in my head because like every <laughs> time we played it, it's just like it's been a couple months and I'm just like – I'm at square one. I don't remember. Right. Like what? Should, it's it's just I I really like it, but it is for whatever reason this one breaks my head. I don't know why, but nonetheless, it's uh, BGG's number four. It's still a great game, great board dice tea game. They're crushing it with all these tea games. Oh, yeah. They're just <laughs> they're just crushing it. Um, and so let's go ahead and get into our number four. Our number four comes in at six thirty one overall. Called. Calico. Shocking. We yeah, love this game. <laughs> we really like it a lot. It's cute. Cats, cute. It's, they're as savage as cats are in that game. It's yeah. like you, it's it, <laughs> like a good quilt. It lures you in, but it then does. you find out it's a trap. It's a trap. And now you're stuck having to think in five dimensions at once as you try to, to balance all those different things. But it is honestly colorful. You make, you end up with a beautiful little piece of you art. You do. Um, and... <laughs> I, I always try and go for the rainbow button, you know, yeah, like collecting of one of each button and then you get that rainbow button. Yeah. And it's like, it was a button that's made for me. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It is it's your perfect. kind of button and it's perfect. And it is very satisfying to get it. I kind of low key try to do the same thing. Even if it's against my better judgment, I'm just like, just want to get that green button so I can get that rainbow button. Oh, yeah. it's so exactly. good. But yeah, it's, it's, there's just a lot of fun stuff to explore. And of course the game's gonna be very different every time because the tiles will come out in a different order. And like, I get stuck like hoping like if just the yellow pinstripe comes up everything will be fine you're like it may or may not yeah. ever happen so maybe i shouldn't just like hinge everything <laughs> on this one specific everything tile. i have on this one thing. but i end up stuck in those situations but it's a really fun beautiful game uh that we talked about calico rips yeah it's great rainbow buttons all day yeah. we need more rainbow buttons in games we need more rainbow buttons golly it's true. it's true very nice uh that is our number four so let's go ahead and jump into board game geeks number three All right, BGG number three is number 424 overall, and that is Eclipse Second Dawn for the Galaxy. Nice. So this is like the second edition of Eclipse. Eclipse Redux, man. Yeah, which is a game that uh, I think all three of us like quite a bit, but I haven't. we haven't played the new version. One of our friends got it. We haven't been able to see him because, you yeah. know, coronavirus, unfortunately. But he got it, and uh, we love Eclipse, so I am super excited to try uh, the new version of this great 4X space game. Yeah. 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 Steph, you like Eclipse too, right? I, I, I have too. I haven't actually played it yet. I don't know if there's any real major differences between the editions, but obviously I want to play it and see. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> I don't... Just for the game trace. I know that, the, yeah, that the game tray stuff is going to make life a lot easier in terms of like moving a bunch of oh, a billion Lord. wooden cubes around and stuff like that. So I'm very excited for that. Um, and everyone I, has their own ships. It's just a cool kind of a yeah. new version of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it's what it is. It's mostly kind of just sprucing up that. And I think... I can imagine maybe it'll be like a lot of times with these versions of games, there's a couple things that maybe get streamlined yeah. from before, but overall it's going to remain largely the same. Like Eclipse is a very successful game. Why would you overhaul everything yeah. about it? Sure. If it's already one of the highest rated games ever. Right. Yeah. So um, super excited. Yeah. If you've played the new version and know and can speak to some of those differences, maybe a couple things that have changed, put in the comments below, let us know what our appetite so that we get excited to finally play this again when we can uh, rejoin with people around a table. Um, that's number three. Obviously, the first one was good. People like the new one uh, because it's just probably a, an easier to play version of the game with those game trays. Those game trays, I want them. Um, <laughs> but let's go ahead and jump into our number three. three. Our number three overall is number 15. Obviously, really well loved. It is Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. Jaws right. of the Yeah, Jaws. 15 already. We're, oh. Real talk, like, where do you think this is going to end up, Steph? Like, I think it's going to end up fairly high. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It seems destined with, to be a with, top with, 10 with, with a good reason, though. I mean, the game is yeah. epic, and it's... So I think uh, Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion is really a great intro into yes. the Gloomhaven world. And yes. it's still challenging. So for yeah. those, you know, who already have enjoyed all of Gloomhaven, which I can't even imagine that at this point, but <laughs> I'm sure I'll get there. Right. Um, but it, it's... It, I love the book of maps instead oh. of having to set everything up. Yep. It's just, just so nice to have that book. Let me buy one for normal Gloomhaven. I'll pay money. Just let me buy it. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah, that, that I know, is, right? And I can throw out all those <laughs> it's tiles. The most ingenious thing ever. We just flip over, and you have all your stuff set up for you. Oh. And it's all laid out, and there's like the fact that it keeps the little story elements and stuff right there. It's just contained. Oh, it's so brilliant. it's so well done. Yeah, it's great. Oh, and like you so said, it's, Steph, it's like it's just Gloomhaven. I mean, it's yeah. it's just Gloomhaven, really, ultimately. But it's like the new characters are great. They're super fun. The new map is great. The stories are great, and it's still challenging. It's it's wonderful. It really is. I think it deserves. All love, like I said, it's also a brilliant marketing strategy because you're like, hey, you like this? There's a much larger version of this yeah. game, yes. <laughs> you know. But it's great. It's a great, and the way they teach you, um, I think we've talked about this step, but the way they exactly. teach you with like the, they lead the you first into it, five yeah. scenarios, and they just a little bit of the rules, and then a little bit more of the rules. Man, it is brilliant. Yeah, it works so well. It's really, well. really well done. Yeah, because game... uh, honestly, Gloomhaven is very intimidating for those who yes. haven't played a game like it. The box is huge. There's so much content. You don't know what you're doing. There's so many rules. And so this is just like amazing, right? <laughs> like, yeah. And now yeah. it yeah. gets you hooked. And then you're like, okay, I can take on Gloomhaven. No problem now. So yeah. Yeah. You, know, you jump into that. Um, it's so brilliant. I am just, I, I, I can't speak more highly of this game. It's, you know, definitely one of my favorites from the year. I haven't yet finished it, but we're over yeah. halfway through and it's just, yeah. I'm loving it. Yeah, I'm yeah. playing through with my roommate and we're having such a good time. It's just, it's great. Yeah, it's, it's really just Gloomhaven that's more accessible in every way. It's more affordable. It's easier to get into and exact learn. Target, you know, it's, it's like, yeah. yeah, it's honestly brilliant. It deserves all its success. So that's uh, number three for us. Three. Uh, yes. Yeah. Based on its ranking, you, you, you're you going to see it again on your list. But we'll talk about that in a minute. In the meantime, <laughs> we'll get to Board Game Geeks number two. All right, we're cracking the top 100 now. Um, BGG's number two is 73 overall, and this is a big Vita Lacerda game on Mars. Yeah. That came at the Kickstarter, yeah. I think it was last year, but the came, game came out this year. We played this month. Our, our, our friend who also got Eclipse, he has this game. We played it once, and I, I liked it. I want to play it again because I'm not entirely sure how much I liked it. I... Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was one of those that, like, it's you're learning, and for a Lacerda game and stuff, I feel like it had... it was easy enough to get into, but um, I really enjoyed the idea of like having to go down to the planet of Mars itself and then going back to kind mm -hmm. of your space station and that kind of deciding when and how to kind of go back and forth and do stuff was interesting. Kind of the fact that people can progress technologies that then everybody can use because mm -hmm. that technology now exists was interesting, but I would have to play it again yeah. to... It's been a while. Truly, yeah. yeah, it's A, been a while, and it was just one of those, I'm like, you're sort of just treading water the first time, getting bits and pieces of things, but I don't. I wouldn't say I have like a holistic view of the game. No. Have you played On Mars stuff or have any real feelings about it? No, I haven't played it. It's, um, you know, one of the big Lacerda games, so it's always hard to get that those those games played, you know, for yeah. me, just because... I, I like his games generally, but some of them are have been misses. So I'm just kind of like, well, I have to figure out if I think I'm going to like it first <laughs> before yeah, I'm devoting yeah, right all that effort into learning. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I mean, to learn it is a lot and then the game isn't going to be super quick. So if you're wondering if you're going to even enjoy the experience, I see why you aren't in a rush. Um, On Mars is cool, though, and I feel like... Um, the, from what I can recall, there was a lot of things that kind of like flowed in a way that kind of made sense and I was like I appreciated that so I'm like okay even though this game has a lot going on like all this stuff is fairly sensible so it was a little easier to get into and understand yeah. um I mean obviously it's <laughs> well People liked it 73 you know, already yeah. not bad um but it's <laughs> and really the production cool. quality is great as all his oh, games yeah. are I mean, super yeah. nice production yeah very well done um I'll yeah, play it. Was, it was, the year's the year isn't over at the time of this recording the year I still have like I don't know 10 something days yeah, he's he's got time, y'all. So I've got he's time. Got those times. Games, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that is number two uh, on Board Game Geek's list of best games of 2020. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into our number two. Our number two is 1387 overall called My City. Oh, oh man. Tile so placement good. and polyominoes is like glorious so for me. <laughs> It's cool. It yeah. really is. It's just. It really is. This is a game that we uh, bought because a lot of people said it was really good. And we were kind of like, all right. You know, like we like random Kanitsu games, but it's just, it's called My City. It's just like, it's poly all rock. Okay. Man, oh man, did we love this game. It was yeah. so <laughs> darn good. I mean, it, it really helped us through many weeks of our summer. Uh, you know, we played it with my fiance, Nick and I, and we'd play every week. Um, and it's a, it's a polyomino legacy game. Yeah. 
uh, where you are building out a city that are, you know, you have buildings on these little polyomino shapes and you have all these rules about where you want them to be, how you want them uh, to be laid out, certain things you want to cover up on your board, other things you don't, and that will change uh, periodically throughout the game. You're playing eight chapters. Each chapter has three episodes, which is sort of meant to be played a night. And that's what we would do. We play like a chapter a week, one night and we play a chapter a week and things evolve as your city kind of grows and you move into, yeah. into the future and stuff. And it's just super interesting. So, uh, Steph, how was your experience playing through the campaign without, I guess, spoiling oh, anything? See, I yeah. haven't played through it all yet. I've oh, only done really? chapter one and I'm dying. I'm dying to play oh, more. Man. That's why I don't want to say too much about what things uh, get discovered. Wait until the dinosaurs show up. It gets wild. It's wild, man. Yeah. The aliens roll in. It's yeah. crazy. No, so, but it's oh just so goodness. cool <laughs> to have <laughs> this polyomino t- tiling game where as things go, all of a sudden what you might your focus might change mm-hmm. and stuff. And it does a really good job of keeping a really stable base um and then just changing little things all of a sudden you're like oh well hmm now i gotta okay let me think about this over here and it's just brilliant it's okay yeah yeah yeah. and it's every three games you play and so it's just enough time where you kind of get into like the mode of doing this and then you have to change over to this thing it's just a really fun game um this is like yeah it's affordable it's like at barnes and nobles it's like 35 bucks yeah it's great we're like thinking about buying it again and playing through it again yeah. we liked it that much it was so fun y'all oh my it's goodness. really fun i want to play so badly <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, gotta... I, I like his games generally yeah. so i you know uh, i'm big fan big fan of polyominoes yeah. big fan of tile placement i love uh, multiplayer solitaire too where everybody's yep. doing their own thing with yep. the same information i love yep. that so much right. yep. so much is happening i love it <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a great true. thing of like everyone has to play the same tiles in the same order, but what you all do with those tiles is going to be wildly different. And then, of course, with legacy games, stickers come out, your your boards become their own thing very quickly. Yeah. Um, and yes. so that's just so fun to think of. Like, we're all playing the same stuff in the same order with wildly different results. Yeah. It's a great game. Really highly recommend yeah. it. It's hour number two. Um, yeah, check it out. Can't speak highly enough yeah. about it. It's real good. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number one, and then we'll get to our number one after that. Gordon Geese number one is 15 overall. It's Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. We what? About already. It's great. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you like Gloomhaven, but you want to be bite-sized, or, or if you're interested in Gloomhaven, but don't necessarily want to fully commit, Jaws of the Lion literally is the best possible thing you could do for yourself because yep. it's like we just talked about. It's everything Gloomhaven. Um but you can just jump into it more quickly. It will literally baby step you into the yeah. game. There's uh, there's cards you have in the first couple of games that you'll never use again. And they, on the card, give you extra information about this is how attacking works. And this and this. so it makes it so crystal clear. It's brilliant. And that's one thing with Gloomhaven that's tough is that there's so many icons. There's so many specific rule things that are very, um, very... Well, in this scenario, there's all these kinds of monsters, and they work like this. So, like, how does my ability yeah. now? There's like an FAQ on BGG for Gloomhaven, and it's like 500 questions long. Yeah, yeah. Because there's just, just all these little. When you have like a hundred different scenarios, yeah, it's like there's a lot of like really obscure. Like, well, in this exact situation, what would happen here? Yeah. And it's like so. It's it's so they just kind of baby step you in, say, and they really help hold your hand throughout it, so you can get up and running, which is. It's just, again, great. we just talked about it, but it's like one of the coolest things ever to say like, hey, here's this big epic thing. I'm going to make sure that you get in and have a great time, which is just a cool move from publishers to like really take care of people that way. Uh, that helps create board gamers, y'all. So yeah. I'm all for that. And it deserves it. deserves its success. Yeah. That's it. Um, so that's Board Game Geeks number one. We got number one to talk about. So let's get into that right now. I'm so excited for this one. It's a good pick. We, we did really good on this. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Our number one is 1681 overall, which should be much higher in my opinion. It is the Lost Ruins of Arnak. Oh my goodness. It's so great. It's (laughs) nothing against. Speaking of exploration games, this is like Indiana Jones and like (sighs) amazing theme, some deck building, worker placement, exploration. It's like got got it all going on. It's got it all. I personally love this game. It's gorgeous. I I know you guys. Maybe the prettiest board ever. It's got one of the most gorgeous boards <laughs> on the planet. Yeah, that sort of setting sun in the distance and sort of that. The It's one of the ones Beautiful. where I'm like kind of glad it's a portrait layout yeah. of a board, which isn't normally my style, but it kind of just gives a depth oh, and scope to great. it all. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. so good. And this game, this game, like like Steph was saying, like it's deck building, a little bit of deck building, a little bit of worker placement, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But 
this game, kind of like Paladins was game we talked about earlier, has a very similar feel in terms of it's just about trying to extend your turn as long as possible. Right. You're basically like, okay, I'm going to go do this. That's going to give me these resources. Oh, now I can turn these resources to do this, which is going to get me this. Okay, now I can do this. And you're basically just trying to, because you only kind have like like two workers yeah, yeah. that you can put out. So you're basically just trying to extend your turn. And you, you usually can. You can just keep going, keep going. And it's so yeah. satisfying. Oh my yeah. gosh, it's the best game of the year. Yeah, it, it kind of <laughs> reminds me a little bit of Terra Mystica in that way. You know, where you take a little turn. Every time it comes to you, do one one thing. And then it comes back to yeah. you, do one thing. And you're just trying to like extend as much as you can with what you've got. Um, and so... You know, it's just, I can't, if I can get this here, then I can tap my my assistant to get this, and then I can do this. And I, I mean, I, there's just there's so many combos. So obviously, I know why you guys like it, because there's so many yeah. combos that you're like combos. working on. And like guardians to defeat, and more rewards to collect. And I don't know, there's just, this, the theme is awesome. I love it. Yeah. The game is gorgeous. I love uh. it. <laughs> you know, like this, every everything checks the I love it box, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it really does. It's it's satisfying. Uh, you absolutely hit it right. Like Nick and I, I feel very like satisfied by combos. We can chain something together. It makes me feel clever. This game is all about that. It's just like how can you kind of stretch and do all these things. So it just ticks off a lot of yes. our boxes. Yes. Um, it just kind of it's one of those games when we played it. First of all, heard about. It, I was like, this looks amazing. I'm really interested That's in this. Great, yeah. Finally played it, and I was like, this is tailor made for us. Like, this is <laughs> yeah. exactly the kind really of stuff is. we want. Yeah. And it gives you a little bit of a lot of different things. And you made a good point, Steph. One thing I really appreciate is like you end up in those last couple rounds. Uh, they, the rounds get longer and longer as you have more stuff you can do. But I love that you're all doing like one thing at a time. Yes. You do one little thing. You can play some free cards, but usually it's just to get some money or whatever. You play one action and then everyone goes around. So it's not someone taking a 30 minute turn yeah. and then it passes to the next person. So everyone stays engaged. And then if you go to like a, a dig site that I was interested in around that, now I have to kind of change my plan, yeah. but it's not like a devastating thing yeah. because it's just one thing has been done. And that's one of those games like Terraform Mars does that where it's like you only get two actions on your turn. You can come back around to yeah. you, but it's one of those things where you're doing so much stuff that if you did your whole turn at once, God, the downtime would be unbearable. Yeah. You know, so it's and a good it's way like, to kind of keep everything like, moving. Boop, 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 just keeps going around and it's. Oh, it's so good. It's, really good, it's so good. Oh Highly God. recommend oh. from the three amigos. It's so. Uh, it's just really good. It's really cool. Really enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. There's just a lot of satisfying stuff to it. Yeah. Uh, so that makes our list, y'all. That is. 2020. 2020 in a nutshell. That was we, epic. We, it was yeah, epic. Epic list. A quietly really good <laughs> yeah, year. Yeah, it was a good year. Um, and the fact that any games came out uh, at all is is really a miracle this year. So um, if any of these games struck your fancy, try to support some publishers and stuff. Obviously, it's been a tough year for everybody, but board games is something uh, that's kind of brought a lot of joy to, to us, I would say, uh, still. Um, yeah. Even if we can't do normal game nights like we would do in, in the before times, as it were. Yeah. Um, uh, board games are just still great, fun things to explore. So let us know your favorite picks of 2020 in the comments below. Uh, I'm Like you said, we didn't play everything. Steph played more than us, but there's still so many more things than, yeah. than any of us got to. So let us know some games that weren't mentioned that you think are really yeah. <laughs> worth trying out. Uh, there's like, yeah. like Santa Monica. I want to play Santa Monica. I didn't, I didn't have a chance to try that. There's so many games uh, still to I wanted to, to, to do playing. a quick shout out for a few, uh, right. you know, expansions if yeah. that's cool i just please some that i really enjoyed i'm looking forward to playing more um so the magnificent snow uh fantastic obviously i love the magnificent it was my game of the year last year so uh this expansion i was like yes, You're like, yes I just, you know i was very excited and so it is excellent and i've played it and i, I want to play it more and more and more and more uh so if you like the magnificent definitely check that out um, there was a role player expansion called uh, Friends and Fiends or Fiends and Friends. Fiends and Familiars. <laughs> Fiends and familiars. Yeah, yeah, I believe. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's fantastic. It's like you have a little familiar friend, like a little like foresty guy that, that hangs out with your character. I don't know if you guys played role player, but it's fantastic. Yeah, we do, yeah. Dice drafting. So much fun. And it adds more dice, more everything. So if you have all the expansions, it's just like one big epic game and it's just fantastic. I can't recommend this expansion enough um i really loved it um obviously more harry potter hogwarts for charms um and potions love it you get Ginny as a character 
Um, it's a little bit more manageable than the Monsters expansion box because I haven't even beat anything in Monsters yet. So, <laughs> I still, wow. but but the new but the new Charms and Potions expansion they give you some new abilities to help counter a, a little bit better. So, okay. um, I think it works really well. So, if you're a fan of Harry Potter, of course, and then Hogwarts Battle uh, is a game for you, and this expansion is excellent. Um, and then my last recommendation is Sagrada Life because who doesn't want more Sagrada in their life? <laughs> That's true. I agree with that. that is accurate. We're about that Sagrada I, Life here, folks. True. I know. <laughs> it's it's so fantastic. Um, it offers a few new modules and another new die to work towards more goals. Who doesn't want more goals? There's always like that puzzly aspect. It's kind of like Calico. There's so many things to look for. And so really now well. with more expansions to Sagrada, this is like so much that you're like, okay, well, I want to do this. I want to do this. I just got to yeah. get the perfect die. It's going to be great. I'm going to do it. I need that yeah. red five, you know? <laughs> like, it's it's going to work fine. out if nothing goes poorly. It'll be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Be fine. Yeah. It's so good. Oh, Sagrada's goodness. been like supported really well, which is cool to yeah. see. There's just so many different um, things for it now, which is awesome. Uh, great recommendation, Steph. Love that. Yeah, so there's, all, again, in addition to all the base games, great expansions came out this year as well. So hit us up with some good expansions that you enjoyed for some of your favorite games yeah. in the comments below. Yeah. Uh, anything else, my friends? I think that's it for me. All right. I think that's it. 2020 was a, a good year for gaming. I mean, even though we're all stuck inside, but it's stuck inside playing games in my that's case. Right. It's, you know. Yeah, so stuck inside <laughs> playing games, it's a good way to pass the time, y'all. Yeah. So uh, I've never really been happier to have this hobby. Um, uh, and we hope that y'all are staying safe out there. We hope you enjoy a nice holiday and a happy new year, folks. Here's to more gaming in 2021 uh, and more top 10 lists where we yeah. compare our taste against the people, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. How fun. All right. Well, uh, until next time, everyone, I've been Mike. I'm Nick. And I'm Steph. All right. We'll see you in the next one, everyone. Bye. Bye. Happy 2021. That's right. <laughs>